So last session, we stopped here with Sinclair, which is a simple framework for contrastive learning. And it's really simple, as the title suggests. You take an image, you augment it into different fashions, uh, you encode them to get your representations, and then you need to write down a loss function. And for that loss function, you are gonna introduce a new neural network, which is a shallow projection head. And this way you are giving your loss function a little bit of flexibility and you're doing metric learning at the same time. Then all you need to do is reformulate your problem as finding, given, a, given an image, given a query image, finding the correct answer in a set of positives and negatives. So there is going to be only one positive corresponding to this image and two, my, two times n minus one negatives. So you're turning your problem into a multi-choice problem. Now, because you have multiple choices, you can use your favorite uh, softmax function. Okay. And this is one of the first time that you're closing the gap between self-supervised learning and supervised learning. So these features are as good as you having labels from, for instance, ImageNet. We are going to build upon that idea and relax the assumption a little bit. What if you have labeled data? Can you borrow ideas from contrastive learning and perhaps get even better features? Because for images, we have ImageNet, we have labeled data, and it's not that hard to label images anyways. You look at an image and then you say, there is a dog here, and then you're gonna have human labels, labelers do the job. And you can efficiently label a lot of images. And this is what we have been doing in part one of the course when we were talking about classification to give us features. You had an image, you would design a neural network architecture, you would put a softmax head on top of it, and then you would predict the corresponding label. And that's going to give you your loss function, the cross entropy loss function, comparing the ground truth to the predictions of the model. We also learned about self supervised contrastive learning where you have an image, you have an augmented version of the same image. If you contrast these two images together, they should have similar representations, or at least they should be more similar compared to a bunch of negative cases that you show here, perhaps images of trees, etc., or even image of a different dog. This is what self-supervised contrastive loss is gonna do in stage one. Then you are gonna do some transfer learning, change the head of your, non, your neural network to classification. So it's just gonna be a linear layer on top of your features. And then you do your classification there to measure how good the features that you learned are actually in the face of this classification task. You are freezing these parameters. What you're changing is only the head. You are not even fine tuning here. What if you have labeled data? then you don't need to compare a dog or an image to itself, to an augmented version of itself. You can compare a dog to a totally different dog. In the end of the day, these are dogs. And then you can do the same thing. You can write down your contrastive loss, learn your features, transfer the features to stage two and do your classification, train the head. Mathematically speaking, you are writing a supervised contrastive loss. If you hear the word subcon, that's going to correspond to supervised contrastive. Let's review panel B, which was self-supervised contrastive, and then modify it a little bit. So it's just going to be a review of what we just learned in the previous paper. You have your augmentation mechanism. An image, if you augment it, it's going to give you a different image different looking image, but it's actually the same image. It's just augmented. You have an encoder network, which is this gray box here, which is usually a convolutional neural network. Think of ResNet, which is gonna take an image as an input and it's gonna out with a representation vector. So the vector that is gonna come out is gonna end up being 2048 dimensional. This is a hyperparameter that you choose and you normalize it. You divide it by its L2 norm. So the norm of R is always one. Then you have a projection head, which are these two layers here that are simple MLPs, matrix vector multiplication and nonlinearity and other vector matrix multiplication. 
to do the projection into 128 dimension. Now you're here. You also normalize this. Then you sample a mini batch of data. In this case, you have some labels to work with as well. But for now, we are gonna ignore the labels, just work with the images because we want to do self-supervised and explain it. But you have some labels, especially if your data is ImageNet and your mini batch size is N. You augment all of them. In that case, the size of your mini batch is gonna increase by two. You augment it once, all of your images in the mini batch, that's gonna give you X tildes. But what is Y tilde? It's gonna inherit the label from the original image. So you can think of the even and odd entries to be two views of the same image. And then the even and odd labels are gonna inherit the label of XK and they're gonna be equal. If you only want to work with X, ignore about Y. That's gonna be what we just learned. But to be more rigorous, let's write down a little bit of notation. You pick an image. This is the index of one of these images in your mini batch, and you have two n of them. So it's one of these augmented images. One of the images here is gonna correspond to this image. It's gonna just be an augmented version of the same image. Like here, the even and odd ones, one of them you can call it i, the other one is j of i. And then what you want is you want the representation for the i-th image to be similar to the representation for the corresponding image, the J of I image. So you want to increase the similarity of those two, relatively speaking, to the negative examples or negative images in your mini batch. And ZLs are just, you take an image, encode it, project it. It's gonna give you ZL, which are these 128 dimensional vectors. And what is A here? These are all of the images or all of the indices of images in your mini batch, except for the image that you are considering, except for your query image. Okay, so far so good. I is the anchor, J of I is the positive case. Anything else is negative in that mini batch. Now that you have a mathematical formulation, it should be less confusing of what type of a code you're writing in the end. So you have one positive and two times N minus one negatives. Now let's go to panel C of this figure. What if you have, you want to use these labels as well and you're gonna be more flexible. How can you formulate it? Anything in this set of negatives that has the same label as your image that you're considering as your query image is actually gonna end up being positive. Why is that? Because in the face of self-supervised contrastive learning, this image is a negative case. It is part of this A set. But in the end of the day, this is just a dog. This is another dog. They have the same labels. Therefore, they are basically the same thing. They're dogs. So some of your A's are gonna be positive. So you're increasing the size of your positive cases. And then you can modify your loss function accordingly. You pick, a, you pick an image in your mini batch. You are gonna have some positive cases corresponding to this image. It's not only J of I anymore. It is more than that. You could have more positive cases. You normalize by the size of this set because sometimes this is going to be one. This is going to be at minimum one image. And that's the augmented version of the query image, the one that you're considering. Or it could be more. There could be multiple dogs in the mini batch that you select. You divide by the size of that positive set. Now you have a pair of anchor and a positive. You want to increase the similarity between the two. So you want to make this dog more similar to this dog. Actually, the representations to be more similar in comparison to the negative cases, perhaps the image of a tree or the image of a cat. Why is this a good loss function? Because of the flexibility that you have here. This is generalizable or it's actually generalized to arbitrary number of positives. And you can have one, two, three, four, five positives or more in a mini batch. Previously, you had only one positive. And because of this normalization term and the fact that you're comparing the same image to different versions of itself, you are performing uh, hard positive and hard negative mining, not explicitly, but implicitly speaking.
because at least one of these images is a is an image very similar to this dot. At least one of them is augmented. So there is at least one hard example that you're considering. Was everything clear about supervised contrastive learning? And this is going to give you much better performance and uh, better transferable features compared to using supervised learning only. And we know that we saw this from part one of the course, that you take these features coming out of your neural network, change the head, and then you can do object detection or semantic segmentation. And all that is happening is you're changing the head. So it's important to have generalizable features or transferable features. 